Uh, Iran is threatening a significant attack against Israel. With all of the U.S. assets in the region, will the U.S. provide assistance in thwarting this attack? How is the U.S. preparing to respond? So, look, you heard from the president directly yesterday. He mentioned this at the top of his press conference and laid out our concerns, uh, certainly, about these threats that are being made. And he made very clear as well that America's support for Israel's security is ironclad, especially against these threats against that's coming from Iran and, and their proxies. And so the president made that clear as well when he spoke to President Netanyahu just last week, as I mentioned moments ago. I want to be really careful. I'm not going to get into operational uh, procedures from here. Beyond that, we've made ourselves very, very clear. The President made himself very clear uh, just yesterday. Uh, and so I just don't have anything else to add beyond that. But well, we certainly have done joint strikes against Iranian proxies in the recent weeks and months. Should we be braced for joint strikes against, uh, uh, in response to an Iranian I, strike against Israel? I want to be super mindful. I don't want to get into hypotheticals here. What we have made very clear, obviously we've seen the threats uh, coming from uh, Iran, and so we have made ourselves very clear where we stand in supporting Israel's uh, security. That is ironclad. Does that, that does not change. I'm just not going to get into, uh, into details about our operational procedures from here. Just one more on this. General Carilla. Has Iran been in touch via intermediaries with Washington to indicate that when it responds to Israel's attack on, on its embassy, on its Syrian embassy, that it will not escalate? So obviously we don't want this conflict to spread. We've been very clear about that. And uh, we've been very clear uh, that uh, in, in, you know, to Iran that we're not involved in the Damascus strike, right? We've been also very clear. I'm not going to get into public back and forth. We communicated to Iran that the U.S. had no involvement uh, in the strike, as I just mentioned, uh, that happened in Damascus. And we warned Iran not to use uh, this attack as a pretext uh, to escalate further in the region or attack U.S. facilities or pers personnel. I'm going to be super mindful not to, to speak beyond that from here or elaborate further, uh, but we've been very clear. Can you say whether Iran has responded to your or the U.S. What does that coordination look like? What, is, what does that mean exactly? I will refer you to SETCOM. Should the SAF not reverse course immediately, the Security Council must intervene to ensure life-saving aid is delivered and distributed, including, if necessary, through a cross-border mechanism. What's more, we must continue urging the warring parties to stop the fighting and get back to the negotiating table, as well as urge those outside supporters prolonging this conflict and enabling these atrocities to stop sending weapons to Sudan. Uh, with all of the countries who uh, have uh, been identified uh, as uh, possibly fueling uh, this conflict, we have had direct <coughs> conversations uh, with uh, every single one of them uh, to press them to uh, cease their support uh, uh, and fueling of, uh, of, of this war. Uh, they've been named in the press. Uh, we, we've seen uh, the uh, Emiratis be named in the press. We've seen Egypt be uh, named in the press. There are others who have been identi identified in the press as, as well. And with all of them, we have constant engagements. And I know that uh, uh, Tom uh, has had those engagements as well. We, we've had uh, numerous discussions with uh, uh, countries in the region. And in those discussions with countries in the region, we've encouraged them to encourage other countries like Iran uh, not, to, uh, not to engage. I won't get into uh, what discussions we may or may not have have had with, uh, with Iran, but in our discussions with other countries in the region, we've also asked for their assistance in pressing each other as well as others to uh, stop fueling this, uh, this war. The calls that you just mentioned with the Turk, the Chinese, <clears throat> and the Saudi foreign ministers were all today? He talked to um, the Turkish foreign minister last night. He talked to, to Wang Yi this morning and then early this morning and then talked to uh, the Saudi foreign minister later this morning. Okay. Uh, are there others planned? Well? Uh, I don't have any calls to announce, but we have been engaged in a series of, of contacts, not just at his level, but at other levels, too, to talk to okay. foreign counterparts to send this very clear message to Iran that they should not escalate this conflict. All right. But insisting that this conflict began on October 7th does not recognize that, does it? 
We continue to be concerned about the risk of escalation in the Middle East, uh, something we have been working to mitigate and contain since the attacks of October 7th, uh, and specifically about the threats made in recent days by Iran against the state of Israel and the Israeli people. אנחנו ערוכים ומוכנים בהתקפה ובהגנה במגוון יכולות של צה״ל. תקיפה משטח איראן תהווה הוכחה ברורה על הכוונות האיראניות להסלים את המזרח התיכון ולהפסיק להסתתר מאחורי השלוחים. בחודשים האחרונים שיפרנו וקידמנו את יכולות ההתקפה שלנו ואנחנו נדע לפעול היכן שנדרש. יש לנו יכולת הגנה רב שכבתית שהוכיחה את עצמה במהלך המלחמה עם אלפי יירוטים מוצלחים אך עדיין לצד זאת ההגנה לעולם אינה הרמטית דרך אגב מדינת ישראל נתקפת ביכולות איראניות מתימן, מעיראק, מסוריה אני חושב כמעט כל שבוע אם לא כמעט כל יום באופן כזה או אחר וההגנה שלנו מיירטת את האיומים האלה ועדיין אנחנו ערוכים ודרוכים בערנות גבוהה, בהגנה וגם בהתקפה, ונדע גם לעדכן את הציבור וגם להתמודד עם כל איום. תוקפים איפה שאנחנו מחליטים, ההתקפה שלנו היא חזקה מאוד, נמרצת מאוד, מדויקת מאוד ופוגעת באויב בצורה מאוד מאוד קשה. כתוצאה מזה, הוא מחפש דרכי תגובה. 